<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Droid Live Show. Here we are, episode 13. Again, welcome back. Sorry about the cancellation from last week. What can you do? Google Plus Hangouts were down. We were unable to uh, you know, do a show. So anyway, we're back this week. We have a big, big show for you since we have you know two weeks of stuff to talk about. Uh, anyways, I'm Kelly. We've got the whole Droid Life team here, Tim, Ron, and Eric. Everyone say hi real quick. Hey. Hola. Was that, a, was that a silent hi? I think Tim know? might be muted. Tim's dead. Tim's either dead yep, or... Yeah, I was muted. muted. Yeah. Oh, good job. Oh, Hello, go. world. Sorry, my bad. It's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so welcome back, everyone. Episode 13 again. We got to talk about the Motorola X phone rumor from, well, it was about a week ago now. HTC's got an event coming up uh, February 19th. Dave and I will be there on hand for that. We want to complain about Nexus phones on carriers or support the idea that they should be, whichever side you want to take. How about T-Mobile and LTE? How about the Verizon Galaxy Nexus now being an update even behind Sprint's Galaxy Nexus? Oh, by the way, they also killed off the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon. What RIP. About yeah, RIP. What about unlocking phones now being illegal? Bootloader is not included there. And we want to talk about Vine and porn, if that's not a teaser enough. So anyways, let's get into this Motorola X phone rumor. All right, so a week ago, I can't believe it's already been a week, uh, we got tipped to um, Motorola's X phone, right? And it's, and it's been mentioned a number of times now across the interwebs. Uh, but anyway, source told us and was posted on a forum that would like to be, or like to go unnamed, um, that the phone will be announced at Google I.O. in May. Uh, the tar current target release date, although these are always subject to change, especially this far out, it's around July 8th or so. It'll go to all carriers. Verizon will sell for about $299 on contract. No surprise there. Um, all versions will also be sold through the Google Play Store. Uh, but this is where it gets tricky. So Verizon will sell a version. At least this is what the story says. Verizon's going to sell a version with a locked bootloader. Now, if you want to unlock that bootloader, you can pay a $15 a month fee, which sounds completely insane, and I don't even know what to make of that. But if you go ahead and buy it through the Google Play Store, it comes unlocked. There's no fee. There's no bloatware. It's basically like an unlocked Nexus phone through Google Play, not necessarily so much through Verizon. Uh, but they're still not calling this a Nexus, and that's sort of where we're at. So I just want to go around and just get everyone's thoughts on just what, what comes to your mind when you hear Motorola X phone in Google Play, could be unlocked, might not be unlocked, all carriers, price, Verizon's fee, monthly fee for unlocking bootloader. What, what comes to mind first, Tim? <laughs> Uh, first thing that would come to mind is kind of like, I'll believe it when I see it, basically. Um, yeah. uh, given Verizon's history with uh, trying to make a dime off everything, um, I wouldn't even believe the whole, we'll unlock it for $15 a month. That's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. If it does happen, I'll quit. I um, I just won't <laughs> be in the Android game anymore because that's You'll ridiculous. You'll quit? Oh, yeah, You're absolutely. Here first. We're is holding that, to that. Wow. That's ridiculous. Fifteen dollars a month for unlocking a phone? I don't believe it either. It's really cheap for them to let us do that. So I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty amazing. It's gonna be at least thirty, I think. <laughs> at least fifty. Right. Um, I don't know. Other other than that, um, you know, being sold on the Play Store, I could see that. Ooh, what if it's fifteen a month? You get to unlock it and you get unlimited data. <laughs> now uh, we're talking. No way. Now. Now. No, <laughs> no, way no, no, still no deal. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. But it, exactly. but it sort of sounds like a dream scenario, right? That's why it's got to be too good to be true. Yeah. Right. Everything that is usually too good to be true is usually too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So no, no unlocking from Verizon. No love from them. I doubt. Um, it's just not in their cards. I don't think of making money. I just don't make. Eh. Yeah. Ron, what do you think? Um, I doubt a lot of it. Yeah. So I doubt there's going to be a Motorola phone on every single carrier. I doubt that it'll be sold in the Google Play Store. I, all those things don't sound right to me. So I mean, it's it's nice. It's a nice idea. I mean, I, I, I like I like dreams too. Um, so you know, <laughs> they're beautiful and wonderful. I like dreaming. Tell me your dreams, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> not not tonight, please. <laughs> mm, I was young. Yeah. So I, I think I mean, it's a. It's a cool. It's a cool idea. I mean, again, but it's like, what's like number one? Does anybody really believe that? It just seems so freaking unlikely. Um, and then you add on on top of the fee. Yes, that kind of. And I think I'm wondering if maybe they added in the fee just to like make people think like, oh yeah, Verizon is always trying to get more money, so that makes it sound more believable. So, but 
it just it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it, it, I I think there is a a phone that Motorola is working on that <laughs> maybe is called the X phone internally and definitely will oh my call god. That later on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's every carrier. Uh, I don't think so. Eric, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Ron. Like, it I considered it tricky when they said that it would be released on every character or every carrier and you could buy it through the Google Play Store. You know, that's just, at that point, I was like, all right, you can just, you can end it here because the rest of this isn't going to be real either. And I'm just going to stick with that because anything that goes past that is going to make me happy. So I'm just going to not believe until it actually happens. Is it sad that the most believable part is the $15 a month fee yeah. and Verizon would tack on it? Yeah. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, the rest of this sounds too good to be true. But Verizon, they might actually do that yeah, down the road. Yeah, they would. I could even see it on a commercial. They could make a they could make a whole advertising campaign yeah. about like nerds who like to unlock their phone and be like, yo, you can unlock it for only $10 a month. You know, like adding a line for only $10. I could easily see that in my head right now. Mm. The scary thing is that like, the further we get along in this Android world, the more and more we see carriers trying to lock things down and things like that. And so there could be a future where you actually would have to pay to unlock your phone, and that's really, really scary. But anyway, yeah, I mean, the rest of this stuff, it just sounds so... Again, it sounds too good to be true. If any of it is, I mean, who knows, but maybe Motorola needs to make a big splash, and this is their way of making a big splash... I don't know if they even have that kind of pull, even as a you know Google-owned company. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like it's not. I think everybody would agree that they need to do something big, but mm -hmm. can can they pull that off? Does it I mean if Google can't get their own stinking their own phone updated, what makes them think they're going to be able to pull something off with Motorola? Right. What was the last Motorola phone to be released on T-Mobile? Because I can't even. I, T Mobile. I don't know that they mm. have they ever. And had one? the last one, <laughs> yeah, the last decent one on Sprint was the Photon. And right. that was that was decent. Now, when you say the word decent, I mean I think that's kind of stretching it when it comes to the photon. Hey, the photon but... had that unlockable bootloader that people loved, and it was actually pretty pretty good when you did that. But you can keep your unlockable bootloader. I don't want the futon. <laughs> futon. I want the futon. <laughs> oh man, I'd buy that phone. The Motorola futon. Uh, Motorola but... futon 4G Max. It's a fold <laughs> out couch phone. Uh, can you, oh, imagine that! Yeah, it's like it's got because it's got a slide out keyboard, it does, slide out QWERTY, yeah, that's right. right. Futon because it slides out. <laughs> oh you, my gosh! You uncovered the secret behind the name Photon. It was originally codenamed <laughs> Futon. <laughs> oh man, I want that phone so bad. I think kind of like what we're kind of forgetting about though is possibly since you know the source got pulled and whatnot. Um, I mean, there must be some type of true. Someone got scared enough to where like we got to pull this. Blah blah blah. I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing to see. Yeah. This day, I mean, if you put it on the internet, expect that it's going to spread, and then you don't hit up every site that posted it saying, "Can you please retract our name?" Blah blah blah. It's kind of a little interesting little little thing there. Yeah. So just, just to answer the question, it looks like it was the Motorola Click Two or the Defy. Yeah. What's that? That's the last one <laughs> from Motorola on T-Mobile. Motorola Slide has out no cloud. <laughs> Motorola has no business with Sprint or T-Mobile at this point, so it'd be weird well, for them to come out and just drop a flagship. They've done quite a few like, yo. Things, yeah. yeah. Well, not, not flagship worthy on Sprint. Sprint's always getting the red-headed stepchild of the Droid brand. Yeah, but I mean, other than, well, it was Verizon forever, and then AT&T got the Atrix, and they've tried to get good phones, but I mean, even they've, they're getting, yeah. they got stepchilds. Like, the Atrix 2 is a stepchild. Yeah, so it, it seemed weird to me for Motorola to come out and just drop four flagships on each one of the, you know, because they, they haven't really dealt with T-Mobile or Sprint that much. But um, it just same, seems out of character for me. At the same time, though, Motorola hasn't done anything in a while, right? I mean, That's we true. got the Razer HD, and they haven't done anything on any of the other carriers. They sort of need to do something, need to do something big, because this is going to be kind of their first Google release, right, since the Google team's been running the show. So... Again, it all sounds crazy, but they need to do something big, and then they need to make a big splash, and they've got a long ways to go to come back. So, could, you never know. Never know. I'll never know. I'll just nothing. You never nothing know. is confirmed. Nothing is confirmed about him. <laughs> all right, let's let's move out of there. Let's talk about HTC for a minute. So, HTC announced yesterday that they're going to have a big event. It's actually a dual event in London and New York City on February nineteenth. 
And we assume that's going to be for the HTC M7, though we still don't have even a rumored official name for that, which is kind of weird. M7, just a code name. Uh, Dave and I will be there for that event, so hopefully they'll have it on hand and we can play with it and all that good stuff. Um, the newest rumor is that it'll be released then on March 8th. So that's only, you know, a couple weeks after, which we like, right? We, we hate it when companies announce a phone and then four months go by and we don't even see the damn thing. So that's at least a good sign if that's true. Uh, but the HTC M7, right, we've seen pictures of it. We've seen pictures of the black version. Apparently there might be a white version as well. Uh, the black version looks, what, like a smaller DNA? Is it, there's nothing that really stands out, right? Am I missing anything? No, no, no you are not. <laughs> yeah, so somebody somebody sell me on the M7. Obviously, we don't know everything, right? Excuse it could have five, and but somebody sell me on it. Why? Like, why? What you've seen of this phone? Like, what is it that's going to drive me to wanting this over, say, the DNA or something that's been out for a couple months? Well, since five and the 1080p on a smaller display, I mean, it's not yeah. supposed to have a five inch. So if it's going to have something smaller than a five inch, still 1080p. And also have Sense 5. I mean, that's going to be your selling points right there. From, you know, the screenshots we saw of Sense 5, it looks kind of good. I don't know why people are all like, it's all minimized. When I, they're just like, throwing some new icons and stuff like that. I mean, it's still the same Sense. Don't don't get it twisted. New icons so, and a new clock, <laughs> and that was about it, yeah. Yeah, so really, I mean, we're not looking for a reinvention from HTC. We just wanted something... Uh, Something nice, but basically from what we see in the comments, it's just like, it's just the DNA, it's nothing, you know, uh, very big, it's just small, like, incremental changes and stuff, so, I don't know, I'm kind of upset, basically. I, you know, I was like the biggest M7 fanboy there was, and now I'm just like, <laughs> sucks. I'm, I'm a little upset. So. Just a little? Just a little. Okay. But, but what was the other, what was one of the rumors that's going to all four carriers? Was that yeah, part of that's it? the new thing. This day, these days, apparently. Well, I think does talking. HTC have the same poll though? Like, did they even do that? We've talked about this before. HTC yeah. having the type of poll to release a phone on all four carriers. Maybe they're just going to give it one last hoorah, basically. Because I think if they don't have like a hot device this year, they're in the t they're they're in the crapper. Well, so. maybe everybody's trying to be Samsung. And they saw how big the S3 was, and now like everybody's really trying to push going out on all four carriers. Well, everybody yeah. should try to be like Samsung. Well, then again, yeah, Samsung, yeah, well, Samsung has, you know, the money to invest in, you know, releasing it to all that. And you then, think you know, back. What? think back. Think back. HTC to... had the Touch Pro 2 on all four carriers, so maybe Samsung is actually being like HTC. Think Boom. about that. Boom. <laughs> K K KFC game, game day bucket. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Made a sports reference. I'll pretend like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot hoops into the goal. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think HTC has to do it on all four carriers. If they don't, they're not hitting enough people. There's no way in hell they're going to make a comeback. That's just yeah. the way. That's just the way you succeed nowadays. I think. When you're, I mean, right. when, when Motorola was was mm -hmm. was on top of the world, they were you know pretty much only on Verizon, but they also were the only phone on Verizon that mattered. Other yeah. you know because they still have the iPhone then, and so that was what was <clears> helping Motorola. Well, but that's a good counterexample though. iPhone only an AT and T for what three four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's po it's possible to pull it off if I'd, yeah if it's, it's different. Fair granted, it's a different fact. market, but yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, they, they need to do something. I don't know that this phone, from what we've seen from this phone, I don't know that this is the phone that's going to bring HTC back from the dead. I mean, it looks like the DNA. And do we even know if a 4.7-inch 1080p LCD exists? No, Speaking unless of, they're hiding something up their sleeve. Yeah, it's never unless been shown to anybody. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, they could possibly pull that off. But. Well, well, you know how we'll know is the day before Sharp will send out a press release that says, here's our new 4.7-inch 1080p phone. Yo, by the way, we've been working on this. We thought yeah. you guys might want to hear about it. I mean, they probably will because I think that's what happened with the J Butterfly. Didn't, it's like two days oh, yeah. before Sharp announced the 5-inch 1080p display. Yeah, that was a just pretty quick mm -hmm. turnaround. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe that'll happen and that's how we'll get it. Hopefully uh, it'll be decent because I'm looking for a new phone here pretty soon. My Galaxy Nexus is... Getting towards the end of its think, life, yeah, so I think it's gotta be crawling. still rocking the G next. Dang, yeah, dude. Get with crawling. the times, bro. <laughs> I, know, I need to catch up. <laughs> do we want to talk about that real quick? Do you guys have anything else to say about M7? Because we have some Galaxy Nexus stuff to talk about or bitch about one or the other. All right, let's let's do that. <laughs> M7 for life. M7 for life. <laughs> but any, so anyway, M7 though, we'll be at the event. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, it's awesome. Hopefully, HTC. 
does something to blow our minds. God, not saying, I hope you have a gr great time over there. I'm not saying I have my <laughs> doubts, but yeah. All right, yeah, so, so Verizon Galaxy Nexus, right? <clears throat> Verizon has now killed it from their site. You can't buy it. You can't even get it certified. Yeah, RIP. You can't even get it certified <laughs> anything. It's just gone. And I, I went on looking for accessories today because we got a tip from a guy yesterday that said, if you want Galaxy Nexus accessories, go into a Verizon store and they're all like five bucks. <laughs> So if oh, anybody dude. listening has a Galaxy Nexus, go into your local Verizon store. I need to go do that. <laughs> yeah. So, but I went on their website to see if they were discounted there too, and you have to like use their search bar to even get them to show up or anything. It's sort of, sort of a mess. But anyways, they killed it off, so you can't buy it anymore. And Sprint then, like two days later, releases the 4.2.1 update for their version, while Verizon's is still three updates behind on 4.1.1. That sounds about right. Yeah. I, I don't really know what else to say about it. I was bitching about it earlier, and we'll talk about my bitching session, but it's embarrassing. It was supposed to be a Nexus. Is it? I, I don't even like to consider the damn thing a Nexus. I know that's not the whole definition. It's not. Well, everyone says, like, it's Google's phone. Why is Verizon, like, screwing with it? It's, it's not Google's phone. This is Verizon's oh. phone, and they're pretty much treating it however they, like the red-headed stepchild. Sorry, Gingers, but it's true. You're getting screwed. <laughs> So, yeah, why Verizon has decided to do this. Like, people have said it should be the easiest phone to update in their entire lineup, yeah. yet they just can't seem to get anything working. I don't know what the deal is. Sprint already did it. See, I mean, that's what I'm telling. We've, we've talked about this before. I don't. I think there's something that happened between Verizon and Google, and they just, like, Verizon was like, all right, we're going to make this look as bad as we possibly can so that no one ever buys your phones on our carrier ever again. Like, I, I hate like, it when you say that, though. I don't... <laughs> we already I, know I can't true, think though. of any <laughs> other reason why Verizon is just sucking so much on these updates. It's because Google pushed up the price of the Spectrum. I guarantee you. <laughs> guarantee you. They're still pissed. Still. <laughs> 700 megahertz Spectrum should have cost less. You know it, Google. But, yeah. but, I mean, like, Android engineers, like, months ago were calling out Verizon, you know, without name-dropping them and saying, like, this is the reason you're not getting <laughs> updates. As I was writing that post yesterday... I was looking back at all the stories that we've written, you know, complaining about Verizon Galaxy Nexus updates, and yeah, there's like, I don't know how many of their, you know, Android team members going, yeah, it's not our fault, we tried to do this, and Verizon's taking their yeah. best. Yeah, but isn't that the same company that also blamed LG for the shortages of Nexus 4s, and then... Well, come on, Rock, Google's so never really done anything wrong. They've never done anything <laughs> They're the best in the true. world. They're it's Google. Point. How dare you, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> What do you have? Any, you have nothing to compare. You got no evidence. You got no facts. You got nothing on Google. No I have sources. <laughs> Who's your source? You have sources. An unnamed forum. <laughs> Un <laughs> unnamed redacted forum, by the mm -hmm. way. Redacted. Yeah, blacked out. <laughs> That's only like the second time in the history of Joy Life we've used the word redacted. It's really, it was really fun, by the way. Uh, anyway, so Gal Galaxy Nexus, it's gone. It's kind of sad. It, it may see another update. I would assume it's going to get one more to like 4.2.1, and it'll be like three more months down the road, and then it's just they're done forever with it. Just kind of sad. At least there's custom ROMs and all that stuff. I like yeah. ROMs. Which leads us into the uh, complaining session I had yesterday about Nexuses should never be on carriers again. <laughs> I, Here we go. Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is long. I'll try to keep it short. Basically, I said carriers suck and they don't update things. And Google just needs to have one version of their phone, not make special editions that go on carriers like the Galaxy Nexus, which had an LTE chip, which caused all sorts of issues. Then I talked about how subsidies are terrible, and you should all remove yourself from the subsidy sort of ladder or rotation that you're all on every two years because carriers don't deserve to have that much loyalty from you. And then I talk about how prepaid plans are awesome. I know they don't have LTE, but they're seriously cheap. Some guy actually in the comments of the post yesterday was talking about how if people can't go prepaid because family share plans and stuff like that are cheaper. But like I looked, and if you if you had the four people on like a T-Mobile unlimited plan for 50 bucks, that's 200 bucks. If you were on Verizon's and you had four gigs shared between your family on four smartphones, it's like 230 bucks. I mean, the, those prepaid plans are insanely cheap. Again, don't have LTE, but HSPA plus 42 on T-Mobile is actually pretty damn fast. Um, and then I talked about how unlocking phones is illegal. So again, just free yourself from a carrier so you have more freedom and they're not telling you what you can and cannot do with your phones. And that was sort of the uh, 
the gist of the whole thing. Anybody have any reaction to that? I know we had a ton of comments. We had people hating me, agreeing with me. You know, it kind of went all over the place, so. I was, I was surprised you didn't get, like, an email from Verizon PR saying, what are you telling these people? God. Because we're Verizon PR puppets, right, Jim? That's right. Yeah, that's what well, we do. According to someone. <laughs> Some random Thanks. guy on Google+. Plus, yeah. Take all those kickbacks. Yeah, Verizon has their hand up our ass. But, yeah, but uh, I mean, what, what do you guys think? Would you like to see an Nexus on a carrier again, or are you done with it? I, I'm just so fed up with the Galaxy Nexus situation on Verizon that I don't want I don't want anyone to deal with that again, especially me. I think, uh, well, from what I've experienced with my prepaid stuff on AT and T, I wish that say you know say I get the the Go plan or whatever on AT and T, I get unlimited talk text. Oh wait, not even that. I think I get like 200 text messages, but then I get a gig of data for 50 bucks. I need more data. You're and on the wrong damn prepaid plan. <laughs> well, dude, it's just like 50 bucks straight and I don't have to deal with it. And I'm like, what? And it's just, you know, it's just for work. And I'm like, whatever. Um, I know, but I think straight talk is like unlimited talk text and, and it's you can get AT&T with straight talk, can't you? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not big into the prepaid stuff. I've been a Verizon loyal for like since I was yeah. born. I probably need to do a big post on this, like which plans are the best or what. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. Totally. Solo bay. <laughs> Solo bay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, um, bad inside jokes. Yeah. In terms of unlocked phones, though, being on uh, Verizon or at least a Nexus phone on Verizon, I don't wish to see that anymore. Um, even seeing it on T-Mobile and how they offer it, you know, through Best Buy or whatever, through their own site for 200 bucks on subsidized for a two year. I mean, that doesn't even make sense, people. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? Um, we got to pull a Gandhi and be the change we wish to see in the world, and just say, no carriers, we're not going to take your uh, ish anymore, and we're going to stop it right now and make them change. You know, I mean, that's really the only way we can do it. We just have to stop. We have to stop feeding or you know being fed. Stop sucking on the tea. That's what I'm getting at. There it is. You're right. Rant, oh, rant over. So you kind of agree, like, we should all start moving away from these two-year contracts and subsidies and have freedom, wireless freedom. There's nothing wrong with freedom. I mean, this is the greatest country on earth, America. <laughs> nothing wrong with freedom. <laughs> nothing wrong with freedom. No, sir, there isn't. Ron, Ron, Eric, do you guys have any thoughts on Nexus and Carriers? Well, I, I definitely agree with Tim that it's the exact same situation that Gandhi faced. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. That's not what I said. Don't yeah. try and pull Gandhi into this. I just used his words and I made it fit my uh, life. You right, said the right. words pull right. and I, Gandhi. Gandhi. Yeah, you're right. I, I shouldn't bring Gandhi into this. You're right. Never mind. Sorry. My mistake. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's difficult. It's difficult because I think... Um, most people don't want to throw throw down a lot of extra money. Um, if you're if you're going with a, obviously if you're going with like a Nexus, assuming you can buy it, which you know so far you still can for the last twenty four hours or so, um, then obviously it's not super expensive. But I think most people, I mean, a lot obviously a lot of our readers like having LTE and want to have LTE, which throws you into having a contract. And if you are keeping your phone for two years and don't mind, I mean. It's no matter what. It's it's there's there's problems with it because in theory, you know, you you have your subsidy uh, to cover the cost of the phone. But even after you pay off the cost of the phone, you're still paying the exact same amount. So it's not nothing's totally fair there. So the only way to win at that is to keep getting phones um, in that model. Uh, so it's I mean, there's there's definitely problems, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if I see that changing anytime soon. It'd be cool. It'd be um, and I lo and I love what T-Mobile's trying to do with uh, you know getting rid of the subsidies and stuff like that uh, coming up soon. I think that that has the potential to shake things up. Um, but we'll see. Eric, I'm trying to think of another <clears throat> situation where you know, somebody owns the spectrum of which we use and they have the control over us and the only thing that comes to mind is broadcast oh, and cable and that kind of stuff, yeah. But it just, I don't know, we're, we're not really in the position to do much about it unless we all just stop buying cell phones. You know, because even if we still use Verizon's, uh, you know, prepaid or AT&T's prepaid, we're still giving them money. So... I, you know, I don't see a way to change it, unfortunately, unless they do, because they've been talking about getting rid of subsidies, which 
I'm sure they'd be happy for. A lot of people would be angry about. I mean, a lot of people on the on our site would probably agree with it because they're a little more knowledgeable on the subject. But a lot of people around America would be like, "What? I can't get two hundred dollar phones every two years anymore? What are you talking about?" You know. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that you know smartphone sales could like drastically decrease if that happened, and that's not good for the industry on a couple of levels. I, well, I mean, if you just kind of change the way things are done, I mean, you know, people are used to something, but then you just change it, and sooner or later they're just like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then again, I mean, you have to think about the markup that the OEMs are doing themselves when they make the device. You know, it's not costing them how that many hundreds of dollars to make the device. Maybe there's like this middle ground that we just aren't, aren't there yet to where it's like, okay, you make it and then just market it at maybe like 20%, not... 500% the cost is to manufacture it and then sell it to the people. I don't know. Well, yeah, it isn't part of the reason why a phone off contract costs 650 is because they don't want you to buy it off contract. I mean, that's exactly. sort of the point, right? We right. all know it doesn't cost $650 to make a phone. You could, they, sh they could probably sell it for four or 450 and still make a damn profit off it. Well, it doesn't cost $150 to buy a pair of jeans, but for some reason they sell for that much. Like, <laughs> I, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I would just say this is a little bit different because Verizon and carriers are purposely dropping the price on it so that you do that rather than spend six hundred fifty dollars. Right. And that's it's. Yeah. You know, who knows if it'll ever change, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, the other side of it too, though, is like if you're on AT and T or T Mobile, obviously you can get the you know you can do the prepaid plans. But if you want to be on Verizon, you don't. Like, there's no advantage to doing prepaid at all. Right. You know, so that's right. and that's and that's a huge, huge part of that problem. So until Verizon changes its tune on that, which they have zero incentive to do so, it's going to be really difficult. Especially since you know they've got ha about half of the um, market in terms of subscribers, and they've got a huge number of subscribers. So it'd be difficult for them to uh, say, "Yeah, let's go ahead and make less money." And well, their investors, out. investors probably wouldn't care for that either. <laughs> also yeah. true. That is very true. Yeah. So say we got rid of subsidies and. You know, the average price of the phone was like four fifty. Mm -hmm. You still think we would see a, a new Samsung every year mm -hmm. at that point? Heck yeah. You, you think they would continue to put them out that quickly and even if people weren't buying them as much? I think they have to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, in order to make money, you have to put new products out. It does no matter what. I mean, even the TV market, which has been terrible for the last couple of years, they still put out new TVs every single year because you have to have something new or you have nothing to talk about, nothing to promote, nothing, you know. Yeah, that's true. And if you're switching people over to the idea of, okay, I'm going to buy a phone on my own and my bill's going to be lower, then, I mean, that's going to raise the chances of people buying phones every year as well. For sure. So, which isn't more money for the carriers, obviously, but it is more money for the manufacturers. So, yeah. That, that would be one way if, if, you know, if somebody wants to really affect change, like Google, who appears to want to get rid of that model, they start getting manufacturers on that side of it to start pushing it, you know, putting pressure on the carriers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the big issue is it's, you know, who can put pressure on the carriers, you know? Yeah, because right now they, they can just sit back and do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want, and the only, the only people, you know, Samsung's making money, Apple's making money. So, you know, they don't have any incentive. And if they did, if they did try and back off and, and push back, then there are, you know, manufacturers like uh, BlackBerry. Uh, wait, wait. That would, that would be, yeah, that would be more than happy to say, hey, we'll, we'll give you tons of phones and subsidies and you can put whatever the heck you want on it. Mm -hmm. BlackBerry. <laughs> well, so, I mean, maybe, maybe this is why, not to go back to the Motorola X phone we were talking about, but doesn't this sort of fall in line with what Google's trying to do? They're trying to change how the market works. So if they release a phone that works on all carriers and they sell it in the Google Play Store at insanely cheap, isn't that sort of what they're trying to do even with the Nexus 4? Sort of the same idea. Again, we don't know if any of that's true, but yeah, that would but be one of those monumental pushes or changes that could help move yeah. the industry. And that was the original goal, I mean, back to the Nexus 1, but I'm pretty sure you have to get carrier approval to even get it to work. Certainly on Verizon, I think you have to get approval through them, and they're not going to approve it. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's been the problem with it. For, for Google to have any weight in changing anything, the Nexus line has to do well. And to this point, it really hasn't on any of the carriers. Yeah. You know, 
the, the launches have been disasters. The follow-up to the launches, as we were just talking about with the Verizon Galaxy Nexus, have been disasters. It's just the launch of the Verizon Galaxy Nexus was totally kick-ass. What are you talking about? I that's the only phone I've ever lined up for. It that's 7 true. In the I was going to mention that earlier. I don't know why Verizon hates that phone so much when that was the only phone I've ever seen somebody or only Android phone. I've ever seen. Somebody. I've seen people line up for two phones: Verizon Galaxy Nexus and Verizon Droid Bionic. I mean, and that's that's it, folks. I, I, saw, I saw people Bionic line up in the for the Droid yesterday. X. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you saw two people line up for the Droid X? No, I was in. I, I remember the site was like just getting started. And we had like no PR connects, right? So I stood in line <laughs> um, at a downtown Verizon store. I was like, I'm gonna get this thing. And there was like, I th- want to say there was like 15 or something people, and I was like third in line. And I got to the front door, and they were like. Oh, okay, so what's your you know your numbers? So we can look you up and all this stuff. And I was like, oh no, I'm gonna buy this thing like full retail. And they're like, you can't Whoa. do that. And they like <laughs> they turned me away at the door. <laughs> and then I like ran home and like sent an email to Verizon's PR. I was like, you guys denied me. And like threw this big fit. And then they were like, oh, we have one available for you. Yeah, yeah. just kidding. Kind of funny. Here you go. Anyways, random story. Moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on. Socialist um, babble. Yeah, really. Uh, but speaking of you know LTE and stuff like that, T-Mobile's apparently testing their first LTE market in like Kansas City, and then they're also supposed to push out of their Vegas market, I believe it is. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So we sort of posed a question. I posed a question on Google Plus last week and said, if T-Mobile had LTE, you know, would you leave Verizon immediately? You know, they have prepaid plans and they actually have unlimited data and all this stuff. Would you? I mean. It's kind of a, it's kind of tough to say. Like Verizon's network is easily the best. I mean, there's no one that really compares to their network. But if you got an option. You, well, obviously, no one's left for AT and T. But would you leave for T Mobile? Um, no. <laughs> it it depends because right now the only reason I would leave for T Mobile is because you can use unlocked phones on them and you can pretty much buy mm-hmm. whatever phone you want and then unlock it and use it. But that that's not the case with LTE phones right now. You can't just, you know, buy an unlocked LTE and throw it on there. So, I don't know. It'd be weird. Yeah, I mean, people... What is that? Is that coming from you, Tim? It's not coming from me, man. It's not me. It could be like Maybe it's it's Ron's box fan. Ron's box. He's in the chat. The bearings are all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it would be tough for anyone to really leave Verizon at AT&T to go to T-Mobile oh, even if they had OT at this point. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that your cat? What is that? I don't know. I mean, my cat's like hiding back there. Cat, what are you doing? <laughs> it's more like a thumping, like a dum 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 No, I hear that. That's definitely not him. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's, I think it's my wife. Why is she banging on the roof of the broom or something like that? What is she doing? I think she she's making dinner. <laughs> How does she make dinner with two rocks? She's uh, it's chicken. She's, she's tenderizing the meat. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sure you're familiar with that, Tim. I don't know anything about tenderizing meat. <laughs> was that was that a gay joke? <laughs> what? What? No. <laughs> that is so below our pay grade. We would never do that. Like caramba. Right, Anyways, we're moving quickly out of tenderizing meat. We're professionals. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about unlocking phones now being illegal. Uh, so I can now hear the whoop whoop whoop. whoop. <laughs> it's dubstep. <laughs> there is some dubstep going on in the Droid Live show tonight. Uh, unlocking phones anyway, illegal now. So the Librarian of Congress has decided that if you buy a, con- a phone on contract, sign a two-year agreement, subsidize, get a deal on it, you can't just unlock it by yourself and run it off over to T-Mobile or AT&T or swap carriers. They said that's not fair because you got a deal and you shouldn't take advantage of that. You have to either buy unlocked phones because there's plenty of options out there or get approval from the carrier. So I'm sure that's a real easy thing to do these days. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know how that works. Like, I saw somebody in our comments say, like, I bet if you took a phone at and and said, hey, can I get your approval? They probably don't even have a way or a policy to allow that to happen. So Yeah, I can't imagine. I, yeah, I and can't imagine. Let's just, let's just clear this up for some people that, you know, are understandably confused that this isn't bootloader unlocking. This is... Wait, what? <laughs> Random cat. Hey, we're not talking about bootloaders? <laughs> this isn't root? <laughs> 
No, this is buying a Verizon CDMA phone and unlocking it and putting it on Sprint, which I had already was under the impression that was very illegal anyway. That's, so. that's actually highly illegal. Yeah, it's still highly illegal. <laughs> I think it always yeah. has been. But yeah. Yeah. CDMA is a lot different than GSM. If you try to unlock a CDMA phone using a different carrier, yeah, you can get it like arrested for that, I think. Yeah. Get your Verizon yeah. phone and put it on Metro PCS. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be worth it. Yeah. But, hey, but you're right. This, we're not talking about bootloaders and hacking and stuff like that. We're talking like SIM unlocking a phone so that you can yeah. use it on a different carrier. That's the only the only time I've ever heard of you can request. You have to like send an email to somebody at Verizon or AT and T. And I've only heard of people with iPhones doing this. Like they're going overseas and mm-hmm. they need their phones unlocked, you know, so they can use them over there. Mm-hmm. You have to be you have to be in like good standing with the carrier or something like that for them to yeah. say yes. So I guess you have to feed up on your bills or something. Interesting. So yeah, you bring up the iPhone and now my mind is totally clicking in. My, my friend who's from uh, Pakistan, he was just over here for school and he's like, hey man, uh, I'm in Canada right now. I just bought this iPhone. I need you to call Verizon. Like put my phone on your account, unlock it, and then take it off the account and <laughs> I'll be good to go. And I was like, okay. I was like, I'll help you out, man. I don't care. And um, so we called. And the cop showed up. Yeah, right. So I called Verizon and they were like international affairs or something. And it was super easy to actually get the process going. Like, hey, I just want to unlock this phone for world use. And they're like, yeah, sure, we can do that, Mr. Tato. And I was like, good. And but then it just it looked like the iPhone was stolen in their system or some shit. And I was like, and I was like, dude, uh, he's like, I just got this at the Apple store, I swear. And I'm like, whatever. Nope. Long story short, it did not happen. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, the Would process you have a is that. guys steal an iPhone and ask you to get it unlocked. I didn't say that. <laughs> I had a friend who had just recently bought an iPhone from the Apple Store, and the um, like the IMED number or whatever wasn't showing up in Verizon system as one of their good phones or whatnot. So stolen. Huh. Isn't the iPhone five unlocked? As it is, like world phone. I think you can so. Take it, it was a four S, but yeah. Okay, but I, I think the five, like you can take it from Verizon to AT and T, like it works. I think on both. Which is, yeah. oh, here, <laughs> and, I, and I can't tell you my friend's name, and no, it was not Muhammad. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. But anyway, so it's it's illegal now, right? So if you need to buy phones that are unlocked that work on multiple carriers already. Or you can buy them full price, and hopefully they either come unlocked or you can get approval. If you buy it on contract, you need approval. It, yeah, but it has nothing to do with bootloaders. You can still hack away your phone. And the Librarian of Congress in this new law or whatever the hell this is, they said you can still hack your phones and do all that stuff. You just can't unlock them and take them to another carrier. So, yeah, that's that. Thank you. Cat tail. All right, I'll stop messing with my cat. Uh, let's talk about. <laughs> Is that a euphemism? <laughs> let's talk about Vine. I want Vine, mm. and not for the reasons Ron thinks I want Vine. So thinks Vine, or knows. <laughs> Vine, everyone, is like Instagram of six-second videos. You can you basically hold your little finger on the video screen, and it takes six-second videos, and you can almost edit it on the fly by just picking your thumb up and take six-second clips, share them with the world. Twitter owns them. They've released this app only on iOS. It'll eventually come to Android. If it doesn't, they're complete morons. Uh, I don't know. I think it looks awesome. I'm a big Instagram fan, so six-second square videos, I can just see the, the golden moments you could capture that don't have to do with genitalia. Anybody else excited for Vine? Ron? Yes. Um, I think the big thing, well, I, I uh, mentioned an app called Viddy on one of the last shows, and that that app lets you do uh, 15 seconds of video. Um, so it's kind of the same idea. Um, but the six seconds is obviously a lot bigger of a limitation and fits in with who Twitter is and, or what Twitter is, depending on if you think corporations are people. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a cool short way. Um, if you, and you can go to, there's a website called uh, vinepeak.com. Um, you can go there and it just, sh- it just refreshes and shows the most recent uh, Vine videos. Um, so that's kind of a cool way to just check out what is happening. Um, but uh, if you can get access to an iOS device and look at it, there's a lot of cool stuff in there, like um, with the hashtag. So like one of the hashtags is hashtag NYC, and it's just people posting stuff, what's going on in New York. Um, and so that was kind of cool, just like watching people post stuff in New York and you know people walking around the street, going on commutes. Um, 
So I think I, for the thing I was talking with my friend um, about it last night, actually, and I was, I was saying, you know, most of the stuff that I've seen on there, a lot of it's super mundane, like, hey, this is my dog that I'm walking. It's like, well, nobody cares about that on any social network. So that stuff's still happening. I care. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about pictures of Tim? Tim, I love <laughs> dogs. Exclusively <laughs> pictures of Tim. But, um, but something like at a wedding where you've just got quick, you know, like if you're, while well, you're out dancing or, you know, so they're saying their vows or whatever, like stuff like events like that or parties and stuff like that where you get just these quick clips, um, that can be pretty cool. So I'm kind of, I'm excited about that. Um, so, and I'm, and I'm sure it's going to come over to Android. Instagram mm -hmm. was iOS only at first as well and it came over, so. I can't wait for the uh, Vine hater aid from iOS once we get it. Right. It's not our exclusive. This is our club. This, right. app, is, yeah, this app is crap now. <laughs> yeah, the app is crap. Yeah, that was one of the most disgusting only, things. Only I've poor people that. are on Android. That was yeah, my favorite right. one. All the poor people come to Vine. <laughs> we can show off our dungeons that we live in. Yeah. <laughs> on video in six-second clips. Caves. I, don't know, I can't wait till they till it comes to Android. I don't know why they would just do iOS only. Although the first day didn't it crash within like an hour. You couldn't even like. They had yeah. Them. They had well. They've had a bunch of little issues. So and I'm guessing. That, Twitter very, very recently bought them, so I'm guessing it was originally an iOS app, and that's just how they had it designed, and Twitter didn't have enough time to throw out well, an Android gotta, version. you got to build up the, the whole iOS mystique around it. Oh, well, you guys get it first before anybody else. And uh, No, I'm more with Ron's feeling is how it was only developed for iOS. And well, now. yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> just a part of it, too, but <laughs> yeah. you've got to... I'm a realist. You've got to stroke iPhone It takes a while to make sure it's ready. Go. Yeah, exactly, because there's so many different Android devices. Right, you've got to make blah, blah, it ready blah, blah. for all 5,000 All this fragmentation. And... Yep. It's got to be compatible I mean, with Android Cupcake. As, fun, <laughs> as funny as that is, the camera is the issue with most of these apps, right? Because uh, yeah. ca camera software or building for cameras is impossible, especially since there are so many damn devices. So mm -hmm. we'll give them a little and bit of I a forget, I forget who it was, but it was like months ago. Where, you know, we started talking about this and people were like, oh, this is exactly the same as Cinegram. And I remember months ago there was an article that somebody said the first person that does Instagram for videos is going to make a lot of money. And then, you know, this C happened. Cinegram. Yeah. Well, that's, well, <laughs> Cinegram is just GIFs, though. So there's no sound. So that's a big difference. Um, Viddy is probably the closest, and they, like I said, they've got that 15 second gap, um, and also you can, so with Vine, it's literally, you record it, you can't edit it later, you can't pull in a video you've done before, so there's there's a lot of severe limitations with the app, mm -hmm. who knows if they'll change that or not, but like with Viddy, you can pull in a, a video that you've already done, um, which has a lot, obviously has a lot of huge advantages if you want to mess around and make sure it's good instead of having to get rid of it, um, so... We'll see. I mean, it's got it's got a lot of potential. Obviously, it, it got very popular, and obviously, with Twitter owning it, that gave it a lot of a, a, a bit of a head start compared to something like Viddy, which is on their own, you know they're on their own. So we'll mm -hmm. see. It'll be fun once it we will be. ever get it. Uh, what about BlackBerry Ten? Obviously, today was the big BlackBerry Ten unveiling or announcing or launch or whatever. <laughs> we saw the BlackBerry. All right. So before I say this. Is this just a non-America thing where we say the BlackBerry Z10? Because I call it the Z10, just like it's the, like the Xperia, just That's like a the British Xperia thing. Z and the Xperia yeah. ZL. It's not the ZL and the Z. Canadian is part of the Commonwealth. That's why they say Z. <laughs> driving me nuts all day today. So anyway, the they Z. they like the Queen. I mean, you can't blame them. She's a nice lady. She is. Uh, but anyway, BlackBerry announced the Droid X, the BlackBerry Z10. Uh, and it, you know, we we were talking about this before the show. What the fuck? I don't know. There's like a windstorm blowing. Oh gosh! What is that noise? I don't know. It's gone now. It was there though. That was terrifying. It was terrifying. I think we're haunted. Yeah. So BlackBerry announced. Well, we they already announced BlackBerry 10, but it's official now. They re, they're going to release the BlackBerry Z10 phone. I believe in like Europe and Canada first, and then eventually it'll come to the U.S. like in March or something. Who knows why they're delaying it? Uh, and you know, we saw a bunch of reviews around the web, and most of the people said it's it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool attempt by BlackBerry. Uh, it doesn't have any real big feature that's going to get you to move from you know iOS or Android over to it. All the BlackBerry lovers will still love it. The camera is apparently terrible. I don't know if you guys have seen any of the pictures that have been taken with this thing. Gizmodo posted this low light comparison. It took like the iPhone 5, I think the Galaxy S3, and the uh, Lumia 920, and then the Z10. It took low light pictures. 
<laughs> the BlackBerry z 10s picture was black. Like, you couldn't even see what they took a picture of. And everything else you could make out. And this thing, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. So, I don't know. What do you guys think about BlackBerry 10? I know we don't normally, like, we don't necessarily care all that much, but did you see any anything today that was interesting or would th- get you to, like, consider it for just a slight second? Did anybody? Tim, did you see anything from it today? No. <laughs> Um, I mean, the only thing that was interesting was, like, the whole Alicia Keys thing. I mean, what? Yeah, that was there? really weird. What are they awesome. doing? That was the uh, best story, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, you made a little point there for a second about how they have no features that will wow an iOS or Android user. So I think it's safe to say we can say goodbye to BlackBerry. They won't be around for much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, when you only have, you know, when you're in fighting with, like, Windows Phone for only 8% of the smartphone market at this point, and you have nothing that would make an Android or iOS user even consider buying your phone, then I think it's game over, basically. Because, I mean, how long can you ride that 8% or even less than that? Because Windows Phone is actually kind of taking up, you know, they're going up, they're going But they're in there. I think it's, they're done. And now with Alicia Keys on board, creatively, it's over. Like, <laughs> If this had been done, like, two years ago, it would have been really good. Like, they're playing the game like they're still in the lead. Like, they still have all of the business people on their side. They don't have anybody left. (laughs) And the fact that they didn't drop any, you know, crazy features after having this long to work on it is just, like, what were they doing? For this long, because we've been oh. hearing about BlackBerry 10 for like a year and a half now. They're like, "Wait, it's coming! We swear! Just, just give us some more time, please!" And then, like, it's just got a touchscreen. I mean, it looks really nice. Like the design looks pretty good. But I don't I'm even figuring think that's the design they, looks good. They it spent looks, all of their time on. Yeah, it looks that, like a Droid X. <laughs> that keyboard. I want that keyboard. If we, if okay. Rim does go under, I want Android to. Buy the patent for that keyboard. Meh. I'll give you that. I'm waiting for someone to port that keyboard or try to figure out how to get it on Android. Have you guys seen that where it predicts yeah, like, it's, over it's the awesome. top of letters? It's sort of like Swift Key, but it does it on top of letters as you're typing. I'm sure it takes learning to get used to it, but it looked kind of cool, yeah. I did see in their camera, they it's like a burst shot mode where you can drag yeah. this little half circle and it'll find the perfect face, whichever looks the best. But, like, the reviews I saw that were trying to show that off, it was super laggy and slow and they were swiping the circle. It's a cool feature, but it didn't, it didn't really work all that well. Yeah, I don't, know what, I don't know what they've been doing for the last couple of years. Yeah, it, like... What, the, everything they built in, <laughs> it looks okay. Although, so I had a BlackBerry playbook for a while. I still have it somewhere. And I really liked just the... I, just the idea of it and the gesture swiping to, you know, switch tasks and move between screens and stuff. It was sort of simple and it made sense once you sort of have the basic understanding. Watching some of the reviews today for the Z10 and there's, you have to like swipe up and then move to the side and swipe over and there's, the gestures look way too complicated, especially for the old grumpy businessman that likes his QWERTY BlackBerry keyboard. I think they almost went overboard. They tried to make something unique. And I think they took even that stuff a step too far. I don't. I mean, Android and iOS have a couple of buttons to get you around, and that's all you need. Not weird gesture things that will take you a long time to figure out. It's funny you mentioned that keyboard because that's what everyone needs. It's like a keyboard with a learning curve, where it's like I can't wait till I learn how to use this keyboard properly. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. It's gonna take like three <laughs> weeks to kick in before yeah. I. Well, that was like mistakes. if you guys remember, there was that keyboard called Eight Pen. Oh, and it was, yes. it was like, it kind of looked like the Nexus X, but then you swiped around. What mm-hmm. the fuck? <laughs> I tried, I, I couldn't even type a single word with no. that thing during I the whole day it. I used it. I was yeah, like, you got through a whole day, crap. wow. I tried, I really tried, because it looked awesome. Like, you have to yep. admit, like, it looks good. Oh, yeah. But uh, I have no idea what, what to do. Yeah, yeah, so, I still remember when I downloaded it and tried it and then deleted it very shortly thereafter. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It might have been the worst keyboard ever invented. I don't even know if you could call that <laughs> keyboard. What is uh, that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, Eric, you mentioned, you, mentioned, you know, they, they spent all this time working on, uh, on this phone and, you know, they didn't come out with any killer features. But I think, I mean, it's from what I can tell, it's basically in parody. There's a few things that it's missing. Obviously, it's not an app parody quite yet, but I mean, what what features? I mean, we struggle to figure out what features we want from another Android phone. What else, what do you guys think they could have even done to make this better or make this more appealing? 
We could have made an awesome camera, and they apparently failed miserably at that. Well, it, but if I mean, they had an awesome camera, you'd switch. I mean, that's not like what's because that's that's their no. goal at this point. They've got to get people to switch. Yeah, that's the thing. They don't have anything to get you to switch. If it's on parity, you know, if it's on the same level as my phone right now, why am I going to go over there? You know, they needed to be something better. They needed to have what is that in the hole. I don't know. We hope that they can. We hope that companies like that can tell us these things. This is why you should switch, and this is why it's on. I, I don't think there is. At, at this point, it'd be tough, which is sort of sad to say that there's. It'd be really tough to, for some sort of feature or something to happen to get you to switch from you know iOS to Android or Android to iOS or to Windows Phone or BlackBerry. I don't know that there is. Like it's such a mature mobile world, just in general, and we're all sort of. We've all sort of bought into ecosystems. It would be tough. I remember the only thing that I was a fan of on my on my old BlackBerry was that the battery life lasted forever. So if they came out anything. if they came out and said that hey this battery lasts for like Razer Max and then some like three and a half days, um, they released BlackBerry Messenger on iOS and Android and then it had a really good screen and a decent camera, then at that point, you know, you've got some, you've got some things to talk about there. But at this point, it's, it's, yeah, it's meh. Yeah. I mean, you were asking for things that would would make me want to switch, and that would be, uh, those would be mine. Yeah, the battery You'd you'd switch if those things happen, you'd leave Android if those things happen. I mean, I would think about it. <laughs> we're thinking about it now. I think you know, and I think I think that's the. I mean, that's the key point here. Is you know, like you're saying, two years ago, maybe, you know, you go back and look at what what Android was and what iOS was two years ago. There's there's some pretty big, especially 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 Android with the design language changes and smoothness and everything else like that. It's changed dramatically in the last two years. So they threw this out. Not that they possibly could, because they're throwing out BB7 two years ago, but. You know, I mean, that's and that's that's the key. Like, if you're going to try and push into this market, you've got to be at least in parity with everybody else, and and then some. And I don't, I don't know if that's really possible anymore. You know, we've yeah. seen, we've seen, we. I mean, Windows Phone has had issues from the get go, um, and so I mean, I can't can't totally blame. Uh, you know, say so that's that that's the same situation. At least, at least BlackBerry. Gosh, I keep wanting to call them Rim. I wish they hadn't changed their name. <laughs> uh, at least BlackBerry is, uh, you know, get it. You know, at least matching where everybody else seems to be at uh, for the most part. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody could actually do it. I don't know if you could pull it off. I um, remember a story. I think it was it was about a year ago, probably a little bit longer, of this guy who had gotten fired from BlackBerry and basically came out and said, and "This was about the time that." They were saying, oh, wait, please, we're working on BlackBerry 10. The guy basically came out and said, yeah, they haven't even started BlackBerry 10, and they don't know what they're doing. And it kind of it looks like that was true at, at yeah. this point. Well, I think, I think it's pretty clear that they were trying, when you look at the interface and how you work with it, which, you know, going up, I think it's up and to the right to uh-huh. switch. Like, that, that, honestly, that feel, like when I saw that, it made me think of trying to use Windows 8 with a mouse. Yeah. Uh, when you have to do that corner gesture, and it, mm-hmm. which is not intuitive, by the way, Microsoft, please don't ever do that again. <laughs> um, but you know, like they're they're trying to do something quote unquote creative, and a lot it's it's gesture based, which is fine for shortcuts. Uh, Gruber, I think we, I mentioned this before. Gruber put up that post about that. You know, when you have gesture stuff, that's good for shortcuts, but for basic stuff, like that's not it's not obvious. You know, and if your interface isn't obvious, it's not something that's intuitive that people are going to remember. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to have all these. Uh, all these obstacles in front of people to get to learn how to how to use your phone. If you have that, they're not even going to try something new. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and everything I saw was exactly what you just said. It's not that intuitive. It it looks like there's going to be a big learning curve for people going to a full touchscreen BlackBerry device to figure out all these gestures and how to navigate stuff. And an Android phone, iOS phone, you have a button. You hit a back button. You hit a home button. You know exactly where you're going to go. Yeah, tough tough times ahead still for yeah. They're not RIM anymore. The BlackBerry. It's just weird. I don't know. It seemed like sort of a disaster of a launch, kind of. I mean, all the reviews came out, you know, they were all embargoed, and I didn't see many that were all that positive. So, obviously, people were talking about them, but sometimes... Not enough. Yeah, not enough. We certainly didn't really care. Uh, what about this? So, this story, this next story we want to talk about, is from, it's from last week. We can just do a brief if you want, but Siri was almost a Droid exclusive. So... <laughs> The notes, the notes in our in our show thing say thank you, Steve Jobs, and I think Tim mentioned this as well. But 
if if Apple didn't buy Siri, it would come into Verizon as exclusive for all of their Droid phones. Um, what is going on? Not being I'm just the worst person ever. <laughs> Everything is going wrong at the same time. Yeah, I just heard like a really weird horn or something like that. Uh, it was his phone vibrating. It's haunted. Oh, nice. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Siri. No two. So, so Siri, the, you know, the, <laughs> one of the the features of iOS that we love to make fun of on a regular basis was almost a Droid thing. Uh, now we have Google Now and things like that. We could have, I guess, had Siri and Google Now. I don't know. What do you guys think about just, Siri? Are you glad that that didn't come, or are you sad? I think I kind of like made the point when I first initially posted that story that I was like, yeah, man, I mean, if Siri would have came to Android or Droid first, then we would be here defending it. And oh, yeah. uh, and instead of just trashing it on the daily, I mean, like, we just have to think, put it in perspective, you know? I mean, how, how would I feel if I was an iOS user? Like, Ron, how do you feel? Like, uh, <laughs> when, when Siri, <laughs> Siri is constantly getting bashed, because Google now is just far, like, you know, vastly superior uh, in terms of just kind of like what it can do, basically. I want to say, like, vast, or, uh, vastly superior in terms of, like, Siri's total crap and she doesn't do anything. Because, you know, she does something. She does good with, like, schedules, timers, and all that stuff, you know, for basic stuff. But really, I mean, Google now is just, like, in a different league of its own. So, back to my original point, if it would have came to Android, I would have been like, sweet, freaking Siri's great. But now that well, it's kind of like the way it worked out, it's completely different in our eyes. So they were thinking of picking Siri up for the original Droid line, for like the OG Droid and the Droid X. Am I wrong? Something like, or maybe maybe the next year or something. That was like a year and a half, two years before Siri came out. Mm-hmm. Think of how bad it would have been then. Dramatically different product. Yeah, as compared to robot. what it was on the. <laughs> yeah, what it ended up being on the iPhone. That would have. It probably would have ended really badly. Shout out to Kellen's cat, by the way. Of course, Siri. Batum. That's, that's, that is a good question. I wonder. I mean, that'd be that'd be kind of cool to see what the original version was that uh, that Verizon would have been thrown on versus what Apple did to see what the differences were, what things well, Apple threw in, and how, how they changed it. Well, Verizon would have called it Siri Navigator and charged. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder what Steve Jobs saw in it. I don't know. Maybe he was just kind of like trying to be preemptive in the whole like, wait, we want our phones to be able to interact with people and be a part of their lives. You know what I mean? He had a meeting with the founder, co-founder of Siri and was just like, and the next day they made him an offer or something like that. I mean, obviously he saw something great and then he was like, I'm going to make this move because this is like where shit's going. I mean, being having, having to be, or being able to talk to your phone and kind of have it give you information and all that stuff. I mean, really, that's kind of like the way of the future. I don't even have to touch my phone, really, just to, like, look at something. I can just talk to it, and it completely understands, and it gives me back fantastic results. I mean, that's really the future. <laughs> so I never, ever see anybody use Siri anymore. The only time I ever hear the Siri noise is when I'm in a lecture, and some person that's not paying attention accidentally hits the button for too long on their phone, and it makes a little noise in the middle of the teacher. Mm-hmm. That's the that's literally the only time I ever hear that noise. I'm I haven't seen anybody use it in easily three or four months. Ron, when was the last time you used Ron it? Ron uses it every day. What was the, I mean, what, what was the last time though? What, did you? I mean, do you use it like every day or what? Like, mm-hmm. what are the uses? I mean, like, what do you use it for? I don't. I haven't followed uh, Siri all that closely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, and we can kind of tie this in with the Google Now stuff that we're going to talk about later. But I mean, they're both. Google Now is really really good at giving you information before you ask for it. Mm-hmm. That's you know, and so and so from when you're looking at you know if how you how you want your personal digital assistant to respond to you, Google Now is more in line with what you would want because obviously you don't if you had your regular assistant you wouldn't want to be prompting them hey do this do this do this you want them to just be doing stuff. Um, so from that perspective, it's great, um, but Google Now is not as good at um, responding to you know your your queries and, and and asking you to do things compared to Siri. So uh, it can do, you know it can do a lot of stuff, um, and they both and they both do different things um, well and, and 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 have issues on their own. So you know like one of the things that um, I wrote about um, if I if I ask now uh, what's coming up in my calendar, it does a search for the, an app called My Calendar. Not super helpful. If I ask when is my next appointment, then it will show me my next appointment. If I ask Siri what's coming up on my calendar, it shows me my next appointment on my calendar. So now it has some issues with natural language and that kind of thing. Um, 
Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's pros and cons to both. I think now is a lot closer to being what we want because of that predictive stuff. And that's, you know, in the article I was talking about how Google could use more of our location, um, use, you know, use our, use our context better. Um, and the, when you look at the recognition between Siri and now, now is way, way better um, at picking it up uh, compared to, compared to Siri. Um, so it's, they're, they're both really close, but they both have some issues. Um, and one of the other things too is, uh, in the car series great because it's got that voice prompting back and forth versus now where you've got to be constantly looking at the screen. Um, so for in the car, that's, I mean, that's where I've had a lot of use for that versus, you know, cause I don't want to be looking at my phone and then hit somebody in front of me. So remember the Apple TV, remember when that was the thing for like two months, that was the, the biggest rumor in the world. Mm-hmm. And that Siri was going to be the center of the Apple TV. All right. Who yeah. Know like, who knows? Who knows if they'll ever make a TV? Apparently. Yeah. Not. But X- Xbox is doing that. You know, you got the Xbox voice commands if you got Connect. So, Those actually I, work pretty well. That's a, I I've heard people that. like that. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. So everyone knows the Hangout isn't haunted. I found out what it is. It's Thor. He's snoring really loud. So that's that, that there's is. no way. No, I wasn't. That noise. Are you sure? Snoring. Dude, he snores pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> He's short faced dog. I don't believe you know? that. Well, let's, get right. out, let's get out of Siri talk. Anyway, thankfully, we, I mean, I guess if it would have stayed, we would have had that and Google Now, which would have been sort of crazy to think. But uh, Tim, did you want to talk about the Note 8.0 for a second? Well, I just saw people, <laughs> I saw people talking about it in the chat, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's right, the 8.0, and we found out that it's possibly a phone. Holy crap. Um, Is it really a phone? Well, yeah, okay, the, so the well, with the leaked images, with the leaked images, you see the little uh, speaker up on top, and you see the little telephone app there in the bottom left. I'm like, no way, and they gotta be just trolling me. I'm getting Samsunged as always, <laughs> and uh, I mean, if that thing, like an eight-inch device, or at least a device with an eight-inch display, if that is a uh, a telephone of some sorts, that's just a little ridiculous. I mean. Just- we we always ask like when is a phone just too big right there eight, eight point inches. eight inches <laughs> <laughs> so answer your own question um, I really hope that thing's not a damn phone that is that's I'm just telling you wouldn't that, that be kind of cool right though like what's the problem with it being like you know if people want it they want it what's the big deal I saw some people bringing up in the chat like a good reason to have it like you know. Um, if it was a phone, you know, you could uh, kind of have an all-in-one device. You know, you got your tablet, your phone, all-in-one. It's uh. so ridiculous. I don't buy that. <laughs> nope. You or talk on it. Bluetooth. Can... If it comes with, like, a Bluetooth attachment, that would be kind of neat. Um, or that little tiny phone that HTC is making. Yeah, yeah or... Nexus, here's a Nexus 7. <laughs> this isn't even as big as the device you're talking about. Look at how comfortable okay. your hand looks. <laughs> Nexus, Nexus 10 home. right here, baby. Put it up. What's that, boss? So I don't think it's that bad. (laughs) (laughs) Samsung has the Galaxy Note. Go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. If you could just take out the stylus and kind of hold that up to your ear, that would be sick. That would be interesting. Yeah. No, there's a what is it? The there's a pad phone. Yeah. The pad phone. phone, Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. You pull a little pen out, talk. Maybe they'll do that. That'd be dope. So Uh, Samsung has the Galaxy Note at (laughs) 5.3 inches. 5.5. 5.5. 5.5. The, 5.5. 5.5. the tab at 7 inches. The tab at 10 inches, or the note at 10 inches, and now they're going to have an 8 inch as well. Right. Uh-huh. I think there's a 7.7 inch in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So, like, <laughs> are, they, are they literally trying to get every single inch between oh, yeah. 5 and 10? 9.4 is next. 9.4. <laughs> Dude. Well, I think, well, they're kind of saying that it's going to be a direct competitor to the iPad Mini, which makes complete sense. I mean, if Samsung really wants to show other, you know, Apple people that, hey, then we got the same thing for cheaper, blah, 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 then just, you know, put it down and directly market it as an iPad Mini killer. Basically. Then just make your 7.7 inch one better. What? Right. There's no need to start another line at a different inch. No, you're, you're not thinking outside the box, though, Eric. <laughs> you're thinking inside the box. <laughs> Like, why make this one better if we can just make a new one completely? Why why do the logical thing when we can make more money? 8.0 just sounds better off the tongue, too. Like, you don't want to have to say 7.7. 8.0. 8.0. I like it. Note 8. Yeah, I got my Note 8. I'm getting, I'm getting talk Samsung on my Note right 8. now. I'm getting <laughs> Samsung right now. That's all oh, I'm saying. We're all getting Samsung, Derek. <laughs> Come on. Constantly. All right. <laughs> 
let's, let's switch it up for a second and talk about some apps and games for the last couple of weeks. Then we'll come back to some other topics. But apps and games, Tim, why don't you give me a couple? Boom. Um, well, we haven't like done the show since I talked about Sliding Messaging, which is this app that uh, for SMS for only MMS support is coming shortly. Um, so, yeah, basically, oh, man, I really don't want to have to like explain the whole app. It's just awesome. Check it out. Um, <laughs> Done. It's just a text messaging app. Awesome. It's just used with sliding gestures and all this stuff, and it's, it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, we've run it up plenty of times. People love it. They just want MMS support, and it's coming. So it just got an update today, right? I, I it, it gets an update like every day. <laughs> uh, well, you can like view pictures, I think, but you can't send them. Okay. So and that version costs a dollar, which is a really great deal. It's a fantastic app. It even has different themes. So for a dollar, you can help out a great developer who's still in college. Wink, wink, Eric. Get Shout to, out the college to work, kids. Buddy. It's a yeah. it's a legit app. I mean, it is when it first app. came out, Tim and I are playing with it a lot. It, it doesn't really work all that well with Google Voice, which kind of kills it for me. But it, like, just the gestures and swiping between, it's really, really cool for a text messaging app. It's a good one, app. one of the one of the coolest apps I've seen in a while, actually. Yep. Yeah. All right, what else you got? I got PBA challenge challenge bowling. Don't make fun of me, guys. Come on, I like bowling. Um, I'm part of this stupid amateur bowling league where, like, people see how <laughs> people see <laughs> people see how much they can drink in any given Sunday. Like, there's uh, nothing wrong with being part of a stupid bowling league. It's fun. Nobody, nobody's gonna make fun of you for like an app, but then you admitted that you're. In the league. I mean, that's hey. different. That's that's in a totally different league. If you can forgive the pun. Oh, I'm sorry. I like to get around with a bunch of guys, throw some balls Whoa. down the lanes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I imagine you'd be into. Just bringing up it's it brings up to mind the uh, the ESPN commercial that's going around right now with the Busta Rhymes song in the background. I don't know what's is out there. Is there like oh, a bowling dude, you gotta go see it. it. Yeah, it's really. Fun. I think I have seen that. Sam, I, I've, done, I've done beer leagues before, yeah. too. Though, so. Exactly. It's I fun. Can't, I can't hate too much. It's something to do on a Sunday. But, uh, yeah, either way, uh, the app is very good. I mean, it performs well. It's licensed from the PBA, so you – fuck, off, run. <laughs> so you get to, like, <laughs> play against real pros and shit. I'm done. Yeah. I mean, name, like, four bowling pros right now. Chris Barnes, Ray Walter Williams Jr., uh, Michael Fagan, and uh, da -da -da -da. Right. I can't impressed. think of another off my head. Clearly, this is, this is beyond just a beer bowling league for you. I'm, I'm on YouTube all day watching league games and shit, man. I'm, I'm into it. Oh, wow. Pete uh, Weber, thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Radgat. Pete I mean, Weber. Everyone should know who Pete Weber is. That guy's a nut. Yeah, is he the He's crazy dude that yells at people? Yeah, he yells at people, and he wears sunglasses while he bowls. Yeah. Who do you think I am? That's right, or something like that. Oh, yeah, that guy's a that guy. job. Oh, we forgot about the Galaxy 8.9, and the 7.7, 8.9, 10.1, I, and the 7.0. I point knew oh. I was missing one. That's right, yeah. there's an 8.9. Okay. Shout out to the mystery folk. Yeah. Six, six. Uh, I had a couple apps. Well, one of them's not really an app. Google now has college basketball scores now. Mm -hmm. we, we're assuming it could have college football scores, but there's no football right now. So... It's kind of wishy-washy how it works, though, right? You, you can search for teams, like if you just do a Google search for them, and then they'll start showing up as your favorite teams. But you can't just go in and add a college team under the Google Now sports card settings, which is kind of weird. So they're rolling it out slowly. They just clearly haven't um, finalized everything. So that's kind of cool, showing that up. Uh, and then Tim found this app the other day called Push Bullets. And it's sort of like Chrome to phone. Though it seems to have way more options and stuff like that. Basically, it hooks up to your browser, hooks up to your phone. You can send links. You can send files. You can like create like your own list and send them right to your notification bar. It's actually a very cool app. I've used it a ton since Tim and I both installed. I've sent myself I don't know how many files and links and stuff to phones. Very cool app, Pushbowl. And it's free, right, Tim? Free? Pretty sure it's free. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yep, it's free. Yeah. I don't it is know. great. Is it's a good app. Yeah, it is a good. Is there an unlock, unlock or anything? It's just for, like you know to get like, no, ads or anything. I don't think so. I think it's just straight up free. Yeah, I don't I mean, even think there's ads. ads. Free things. I don't. I, don't, they're, actually, I haven't I don't seen any ads. ads. No, it's a it's a legit app though. So if you yeah if you find yourself ever going, hey, I'm on my computer. I want this on my phone all the time, like I do. Definitely check out Push Bullet. Yeah, and then someone's like, well, what about Dropbox or Google Drive? And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's I'm sorry. A little, I can't. A little startup company. Dropbox. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> Who's Dropbox? I can't put like a grocery list 
right into my notification bar, you know, from Google Drive. Like, this right. this app is legit. And I know Kellen was telling me when I first wrote it up, he's like, dude, I've used this like five times already. I love this app. And I'm like, there you go. So I've done some good in the world today. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a good app. Uh, Eric, got anything? Apps, games? Yeah, so my uh, my three roommates, I went out into the living room the other day, and they were all playing Plague, Inc., and that reminded me that I installed it on my Nexus 7 and that I never got around to playing it, and, man, that thing is fun. I absolutely love that game. I know it's not new or anything, but that is awesome. There is no way to better, you know, spend, like, five minutes than just trying to kill the world. What country, the do, you, what country do you start out in? I started off in China, my first one. Wrong. Yeah. One, so you can uh, you can step <laughs> off. Um, you you're playing on easy, I'm sure. No, dude, it's normal. Okay, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I had a couple bucks left over on my Google Play account because I got a gift card for Christmas. So I just went ahead and bought the uh, paid version and finished off the money that I had, and it's uh it's pretty fun. Have they updated yet to, for like the zombie apocalypse or whatever? No, they have not. When that happens, you let me know, because then I'm, right. I'll start playing it again. And right. I wish there was some type of like multiplayer thing, like where you would make a battle and see who could kill the world first. Oh, yeah, you know? like release two viruses and see who, uh, see who wins. Oh, I like it. Tight. And the viruses can battle? Oh. Yeah, dude. I'm writing the developer <laughs> an email tomorrow. <laughs> and then uh, my other app was Temple Run 2 came out. For oh, yes. Android, and um, lots of fun. I don't think I need to talk too much about that because it, it's still Temple Run, you know. Just yeah, I mean they didn't really change much, right? There's just no. like, you they changed a ton. Ropes and stuff. And well, yeah, you, you go, go up now, ride in a car, up and down. Car, 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 car. You got car, car, car. I suck. Yeah. Temple Two is like kind of hard. It's, I'm not gonna lie. It is even, hard. even on the Note Two with this huge display, it's kind of difficult to play. A damn no two. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Shout out to my no two folk. <laughs> Ron, Ron, it's like a cult. Like every time we have a Droid Life show, it's we got to talk about the no two a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Um, we have to make a little sacrifice. Shout out to the no two. Yeah. Ron. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, I don't know, Ron. Did you have any apps or games or anything you just want to toss out there? If not, nah, nothing. He's been too busy watching Vine porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no time for apps. <laughs> All right, so uh, last week we did our Droid Life Q&A session. First time in, I think, like a month or so. And we took a couple of questions that we were going to answer last week during the show, which never happened. So I thought we'd still do those this week. And you guys asked us, what do you prefer about manufacturer skins over stock Android, if anything? I'll let you guys go ahead and answer that. Tim, you want to start with that? What, no. do you like, what do you like about manufacturer <laughs> skins over stock Android? Is there any a feature or something? Yeah, um, I have to think about what I answered. I put two things. I put that you could put a custom icon or app shortcuts on the lock screen for like TouchWiz devices, and you know, there's other devices that do it. But that was the one that came to the top of my head. And then uh, there was camera software, such as the stuff that comes with Sense and the One X and all that stuff. Like, I love the camera on the One X and the software they put. You know, you just hold down, you get the burst shot and all the filters and stuff. And I really like that software. Anything that really kind of, like, enhanced the device's performance, per se. Um, other than that, when it comes to skins and how they look, no, 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 no. I don't like. Timmy no like. Ron, are there anything you like about any of the skins? Do you remember what you, what you, how you answered that question? Yeah, well, I think the one thing I answered was uh, what it was called Smart Actions on uh, Motorola devices. That's pretty cool. And honestly, probably my favorite, one of my favorite things is the uh, clock widget in Sense. I love that widget, uh, especially the especially the new one. And you can get like if you get a third party uh, clock widget, you can get something that looks kind of like it. It looks pretty close, but. I've always liked it's it. Just people not complain. The same. Yeah, and people always come, I, I think I was listening to the uh, yeah, Virgin Mobile show. They're complaining about the thing flipping. I love that it flips. Like, it's just awesome. So I really like that. What happens in Sense Five if they get rid of that? They can't get rid of that, right? I mean, those cool. links of Sense Five we've seen. It's we've always seen that little minimal clock. But how can yeah. they get? It's like no, their iconic the, clock. That's been on there since Windows Mobile. So. Right. So they'll well, the just do one... the minimal clock, and then you can still go back to the big ass flippy thing if you want. Yeah. probably. Yeah. Give me my I thought clock. on the story where they ported the Sense Five to the what clock? Oh. <laughs> you still got porn on your mind. Um, I thought on the Sense Five where they ported it to the DNA, they showed a the home screen page and the 
they still had the flip clock at the top of it. That's oh. I've seen it. Yeah, maybe they did. I'm sure they can't maybe. get rid of that. There's just no way. They won't. Yeah. Eric, what about you? Anything from skins that you like from... Really, it'd probably just be the camera software, basically. And not all camera software. It'd probably just be HTC's. I have yet to play with the one on Samsung. But other than that, I have a phobia, an allergic reaction to uh, to carrier skins. Yeah, most of them are pretty bad. I, I actually can't remember how I answered. I think I said I don't like anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, I mean, some of the things like... Well, before we got Jelly Bean, well, 4.2 anyway, you know, like the notification bar and the shortcuts and to toggles and stuff like that. But we have those now. Um, I, I would agree with Tim, the uh, shortcuts on lock screens, since Android still doesn't necessarily, stock Android doesn't do that. We just have weird widgets that you can only put one per page on, which still sort of don't make sense. So dumb. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, it's stock or die, is that a saying? <laughs> Uh, okay, the other question we had was, this is sort of random, so the, the fact word shirt, you guys maybe remember this thing, somebody said if it was a real word, what would the definition be? I, I haven't even taken time to think about this. Tim, have you decided what the definition should be? Just because I put the question there doesn't mean I have an answer for it. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> we need like answers in the chat. If, if you can think of a definition for the word fact wars, just drop that in the chat. and we'll, Nobody uh, will ever know the true meaning. It's been lost to time. There probably shouldn't be a true meaning. The ancient scroll that it was written on has since disappeared. I mean, it's just some type of, like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It, it, uh, it's like a frustration mixed with, like, failure. I don't know if you could, like, combine the two. Frust like use it, use it in a sentence for me. Frustralier. I don't know. Frustralier. I don't know. I have to make new words to define what back wars means. <laughs> Yeah. Use it in a sentence for me, somebody. One of you three. Who, uh, Fact Wars? Yeah. No. no. Everything just sounds nasty. Okay. We, leave that to, we leave that to the readers. They're a lot more creative than I. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Ron's uh, Google Now sort of rant. I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, Ron, but do you want to go into that post you had about Google Now and how it can improve? Yeah, yeah. like I said, we talked about it a little bit, but I think the big, the big three um, things that I pointed out was... Uh, one using our con using context more. So you know, when I was working on that post, I was in Starbucks, and so I was just thinking about you know if I you know walked in there and just you know boom, here's Google. Uh, what is it called? Wallet. Um, you know, shows up so you can pay, um, and uh, using your location so you can you know if they had tie-ins with stuff like Foursquare and stuff like that, just having that pop up so you can check in and you know stuff like that. Using your context a little bit more. Uh, and you know maybe if you read a lot at a at a Starbucks or a certain location, it'll pull up uh, cards so you can pick up from your last book that you're reading or a playlist that you like or whatever. Um, so just kind of picking up on those on, on your location cues, um, I think could be interesting in and understanding your context. Um, a lot of people didn't like this, but I really like the idea of now having some personality and messing with you every once in a while. And I definitely think it should be like something you can turn off. But like, I love the idea of like every time you do do a search for cat stuff, like it pulls up a whatever that grumpy cat or whatever that meme is. Um, so and just, and just you know. wait a second, you did not just disrespect grumpy cat like that. No, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the name. I just want to make sure. Eric, right. Eric loves grumpy cat. Dude, All right, I know. Watch out. out. Isn't it still? Mm, it was your it was, for a while. Not yeah. anymore. Yeah, that's that. Is that from Adventure Time? You doing? Yeah, he loves Grumpy Cat. Who doesn't? <laughs> Grumpy Cat go way back. <laughs> Meow, see here. So, um, so I think you know. I think that would be. I love that idea of it. You know, and just responding to you with different stuff, and especially on April Fool's Day, since Google's April Fool's Day stuff is always pretty awesome. I'd love that it would the idea that it would mess with you. Well, Google does stuff like that anyway, and they're just like hidden in their little search. Like if you search directions into Mordor, they like, right. you can't simply walk there. You know, like yeah. if they put that kind of stuff into Google, I think that'd be awesome. Oh, imagine April Fool's Day. Do anything you do in Google Maps, it's all the 8-bit maps. Yes. Huh? Yes, please. That'd be awesome. So anyway, stuff like that I think would be. I I just love the idea of you know just tongue in cheek stuff and just you know messing around with people. I think that'd be cool. But the the other big thing was just the the layout. You really can't see a lot in Google now. You can basically right. see one and a quarter cards. Um, so I think that they could do a lot more with that. Um, you know, some of the things I talk about: folding cards, flipping cards, uh, stacking cards, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, stacking is more of a WebOS thing. 
I want to be able to pinch to zoom or pinch to minimize on cards. And yeah, stuff. yeah, because I think there's you know there's stuff that like you want to have there, like weather is something that I like having there. But. Or like say your commute is like a big one, but then you got two smaller ones, you know, for like something, two other different cars kind of underneath it. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, space management is what we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So and I think and I think they could do you can pull from a number of different metaphors to kind of try and do that. I think. Flipping would probably be the most difficult one because they've already got some gesture stuff kind of built into it. But oh, I like where you're going with this. Yeah, Flipping, they could, yeah, but they could do you know they could do all sorts of stuff and and try and enhance that. And I think I think that'd be really cool um, to do that. So and some people had mentioned you know, having having it on the lock screen. So you know you swipe to the left and if they're on your lock screen. That'd be awesome. So and what type of feedback did you receive on this post of yours? Did you receive good positive feedback. Anything negative? <laughs> Have you ever looked at the comments on any of my posts? I, it's actually my job to look at the comments on all of your posts and make sure that there's nothing <laughs> offensive going on. <laughs> oh, so you're the one I can blame then for all the offensive things that happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was positive and, and, and negative. Some people there, there was a line in there where I mentioned that series better at giving giving feedback than now, and and, and I mentioned calendar in particular. And people thought I oh, that's gonna throw people off. People got confused. Yeah, so like, and I wasn't I wasn't trying to say that it can't do that stuff. Obviously, it can. But like I said earlier, that you know, as far as like the natural language and that kind of thing, it is not good at that. If I ask you what's coming up on my calendar and you do a search for my calendar on Google, that's not what I'm looking for. So like stuff like that, like. Yes, I can say when is my next appointment, but that's not the language that I use. So that's stuff that they should have had figured out early on, you know, as far as response and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's, I definitely think it's better than Siri for the majority of things, especially if you're looking at something. Wow, that's a strange comment. Um, if, especially if you're looking at something to be, you know, your personal assistant giving you responses without you asking, it's obviously way ahead in there. But those are just some ways I think it could, could be a lot better. It's growing. I mean, it's new. You know, I mean, really, yep. it's been there for uh, six months or so, and uh, I think it's just going to keep keep getting better and better. Yeah, it certainly seems like Google's can't get worse, right? Now to be <laughs> that's not true of Android, or it, you know, they they could potentially move this into iOS if they wanted to. I would think. Yeah. Well, they yeah. talked about it being a platform initially. So, and actually, the Google I, I did that post on uh, Google Apps on iOS and the app on the Google search app, it obviously doesn't have now stuff, but like if you do a search for weather, it'll pull up a card just like it does. And uh, so it's, they've got some of that stuff there. So I mean, they potentially could, and I would think that they would want to just so they can get more information from users. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I like the idea of, of, of updating the UI because you're right. It's just it's a couple of cards and you have to scroll all the way through them and you have to hit more cards to get some to show. Like yeah. it, never, it never seems like it knows exactly what it should show you. Like, for example, I have, you know, we go to a lot of Blazer games, and, you know, I have those all on my calendar, and there's times when, you know, it'll tell me that there's a Blazer game coming up, but the sports card is, like, nowhere to be found. I have to go hit more cards to even get it to show up, and it's five minutes before the game. So it, it has some issues like that. Like, it definitely doesn't seem to be either on time with some of the cards other than your calendar. It seems to always get that right. But, um, but yeah, I also like the idea of being able to, like, Tim, that pinch to zoom thing you said, where you could you know minimize it or show more cards, flip to other ones easier, or zoom back in to get even more information or something like that to go into like a full weather forecast or some, something like that. But yeah, I mean they have a ton of a ton of room to grow with this. I think that's probably the thing I'm most looking forward to about IO is seeing what they've done with Google now. I think it's they probably need to do a huge release on that, which could be cool. So yeah, I don't know. yeah, Google now it's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Try it out. <laughs> Try it out if you haven't tried it out yet. It's for your health. <laughs> Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. That's a, that's all I had to say. <laughs> is uh is Google now still just Jelly Bean, right? You can't get on ICS, yeah. which seems Cur insane. I don't understand that whatsoever. I don't yeah. understand that either. Doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. It's Google mysterious. <laughs> all right, let's uh yeah, we're about an hour and a half in. Let's wrap up with a couple of just last. Uh, last topics here. So we asked people last week, we had a brand of poll and said, what was the perfect size display? And I think five inch, I should, if I was a good host, I'd have that poll right up right now. I think five inches was the, uh, was the winner. Does anybody remember on that? I don't remember looking at the results. I'm a terrible, terrible host. Uh, but what about Sorry. you guys? Why don't you guys all tell me what was your, what, what would be the optimal screen size? Uh, oh, yeah, five yeah. inches one. It was five inches and then 4.8. That's the Galaxy S3. Then 4.65, which is obviously the Galaxy Nexus. 
But yeah, five inches. I was sort of surprised to see people go that big. Then again, people do love the Note 2 and the DNA. Although the Note 2 was way down there, like below 4.5 inches even. So what do you guys think? Optimal size. Yeah, 5.0 sounds about right. I mean, I can drop the front for a second. Like, I love the Note 2, but 5.5 is a bit big. Um, I could see myself rocking a 5.0 on the daily and uh, being quite happy with it. What was the uh, Xperia? Was that 5 inches? The Z? Or the Z? Yeah, yeah the yeah. Z. Yeah, that, that was five, right? just straight 5, I think, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And I think that's why I love the ZL, or the ZL, if you're not in America. Uh, because <laughs> Damn, it was, Canadians! I know, because it, it was 5 great. inches, but, they had, but it had like no chin or top or side bezel. It was all display, which is awesome. It was a gorgeous device. Yeah. Ron and Eric, perfect size. Don't say 4 inches, Ron. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I think about 4.5 or so. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, the, which one is it? Is it the Razer? Which one's the little Razer? The M. The, the M. M yeah. That one is kind of, I mean, it's, and that's, that's one of the that's things. That's 4.3, right? I mm -hmm. think so. Yeah. Um, yes. and that's, that's not that, I like how that feels in my hand. Uh, I've got the Max still here. I like how that feels. I'm still able to hit everything, all the corners and everything else like that. So. Right around there is probably what I would want. Um, so I do, I do still love the idea that uh, when HP was pushing out uh, touchpad and then theoretically the Pre Three, just and, and then the Veer, I, I like the idea of having a you know a regular size phone and then a bigger tablet to do bigger things. So I kind of like that companion idea that we were kind of touching on earlier and stuff that you know we've seen stuff like the uh, Pad phone do stuff like that. I, I like that idea of having you know different devices fit for, for different uh, tasks. So that's that's probably what I would like. Mm -hmm. Eric? I would probably have to say 4.8. I think that's what I voted. Because the, the 4.65, the Galaxy Nexus that I'm still rocking, is, uh, it feels really good in my hands, but I could I could go a little bit bigger. I don't know. I don't necessarily, I don't think I'd want to go to 5 inches. So I think uh, 4.8 would be my... It's it's sort of crazy to think that just like two years ago, two and a half years ago now, whatever it's been, you know, four point when the when the Droid X came out, it's four point three inch display, and Steve Jobs called it a Hummer, and the Evo, the first Evo came out, you know, they were like the biggest phones ever. People were complaining about they're too big, and the original Droid was three point seven inches, I believe. Yeah, and you know, here we are with five, and you know, the the leading vote was five inch phone, which. Now it doesn't even sound that big because you got a 5.5 inch Note 2 and the 6. Point, was it the 6.1 inch Ascend Mate or whatever the hell Huawei made? And the 7 and 7.7 7 and the 8 yeah. and 8.9 and yeah, I mean, so it's it's sort of crazy to see how far we've come. It was 4.3 was a was big and now that's tiny now. You know, the Droid yeah. Razor M's almost a, it's a small phone. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, one other announcement. Well, it's not an announcement. The Nexus 4 is back. If anyone, <laughs> announcement. Yeah. If anyone wants to buy the Nexus 4, we actually, I saw a number of people in our comments when we posted that up say, I just bought one for me and my wife. I bought two. See you later, Verizon. I'm going Nexus 4. Peace. Yeah. It's, it's sort of interesting. It, it, when it first came out, everyone was sort of hating on it because, you know, no LTE and all that stuff. And then it became this thing that everyone seemed to need because you couldn't get it. And then once it went live, I, I saw a bunch of people ordering that thing. It's kind of cool. They're jumping on the prepaid bandwagon. I love it. People <laughs> taking your advice? No. Watch out. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lastly, Super Bowl predictions. Anyone care about the Super Bowl or just the food? It's really I not mean, even like a predict. Yeah. It's not even a prediction at this point. It's just kind of like true. if you if you look at facts, history. The, the 49ers have never lost a Super Bowl. I mean, it's just kind of. Eh. Um, Ray Lewis. <laughs> I'm right there with Kellen. I'm sick of Ray Lewis. No offense to Ray Lewis, but I'm just tired of hearing about him. Like it's just stop. It hasn't even been the Harbowl or whatever we were calling it for a while. It hasn't even really been that anymore. It's just been Ray Lewis. And now it's the Ray Lewis Bowl. And now Ray yeah. Lewis has been spritzing deer steroids on his tricep or something like that. What's the new conspiracy out there? And yeah. That's how we got back so early. Uh, I don't and, know. And, and, and by the way, why are people spraying deer steroids on their arm? It fixes that's your tricep, your torn me. triceps, apparently. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's like a miracle drug. Yeah. yeah, so so Tim, yes, we know you're going for the 49ers. You're a SF guy. Eric, you love Joe Flacco. Don't you love Joe Flacco? Okay, do we want to get into this? Because I'll tell you a little tale. 
Oh, you got a story about Joe Flacco? Oh, dude. Okay, so last year, fantasy football, I, I got two wins in my league. I got stumped. It was bad. So I got first pick. I got first pick this season. I was like, man, this is going to be it. I'm going to get myself a good running back. First pick overall. Here we go. Took Ray Rice. He was a monster last year. Wait, what? Year. I Your was like, first pick, you took Ray Rice? Yeah, dude. He was he was the first or second best running back last year. So oh, there's a mistake. Like, oh, it's gonna be a great season. You know, he he did well last season. He's gonna do even better this season. And then Joe Flacco was like, "Hey, it's my time. Here we go." And then this season happened. And no running game whatsoever. Yeah, um, Deadspin <laughs> wrote a Deadspin wrote a story on it today. They were like. I don't know why all these people are writing stories about Ray Rice like emerging from the shadows and he's like ready to step into the prime time because he's been to three Pro Bowls in being the league five years. He's one of the best running backs in the league this side of Adrian Peterson, and it's all about Joe Flacco right now. He, that man can't do anything wrong. I'm like, I just, just I can't stand Joe Flacco. He's so bad. These these deep He's balls. He gets, not that bad. he gets bailed out by these really good athletic wide receivers that can jump higher than everybody else, and yeah, he just chucks it up there. Super athletic. Yeah, he just and it just makes him look like the best thing in the world. I just can't stand it. I mean, I don't and really, I really care who wins, but I, part of me hopes that Joe Flacco just lights up the Niners like 450 oh, no, yards. Dude, just so you can get... go, he's so overrated. It was always receiver. Oh, he's the worst. Don't, don't really ever, want to ever say, say that, Colin. Don't even think that type of stuff. Uh, not cool. I re- was reading on, like, I, I trust Bleacher Report for their kind of, like, unbiased sports news. Uh, and, you, uh, okay, just, oh, i got to stop you right there. You cannot trust anything that Bleacher Report <laughs> writes. It's all, like, random, like, reader-contributed articles. Like, nothing oh, but they say exactly. legit. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying it's like an even, no, it's like an even it's all- opinion. No, it's like an even opinion. I'm just saying. Like, if you have everyone from the different spectrums contributing, then it's you get a more even feel for how other people feel about it, you know? You don't just have one analyst saying, telling you how it is. You have real fans, real dedicated people kind of telling how it is. The man. last person you should trust on sports ever is a fan. <laughs> ever. <laughs> That's true. I trust myself. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm just saying, so, some guy was saying Kaepernick doesn't have the arm to win the Super Bowl. And I was like, he's got the best arm in the league right now. you got to be kidding me. And, oh, uh, whoa, I, don't, I don't know about that. Dude. That but, might be going a little too far there. Look at the numbers. Look at this Look at this kid. He has an amazing arm, but and he can run the ball. Come on, man. Yeah, that's why he has an amazing arm. Everybody's respecting his run game. <laughs> he can throw the ball, too. I don't know if you saw our victory over the Packers just a couple few weeks ago. Hey, but. I'm rooting for the 49ers, okay? My no. boy Alton Smith is just going to go ham all over Joe Flacco. No, we're, still, gonna, we're still going to argue. So <laughs> there you go. So gonna argue. Ron, I would love to know what you're feeling mm. about the Super Bowl. So many deep feelings. I have. <laughs> so I want to know, are you actually, are you going to go to like a Super Bowl party at least or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. I do that. What are you going to yeah. talk about while you're there? Apple stuff? Yes. Android stuff? Constantly. Just, <laughs> I'm going to annoy all my friends by talking about phones. That's yes, cool. I can check the score of the game on Siri. Check this out. <laughs> hey, yeah. Siri, what's, what's the score of the Super Bowl? Hello. I don't know. I can search the web for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> or Siri. Like soup or bowl. That's what I'm <laughs> yeah. So a friend of mine's throwing a Super Bowl party, and it's the, uh, it's the cliche food party. I don't know if I've talked about this. And it's like you're supposed to bring us like a you know every fast food commercial has a has a commercial for this is the new party food like Taco Bell's is like six it's like a twelve pack of whatever taco box like six Doritos six KFC Doritos. game day bucket go boom KFC day bucket go boom yeah, I think we talked about it. so yeah that's what that's what my buddy might throwing the cliche food party so I don't know what I'm gonna bring yet but apparently Monday I'm pr- not gonna be walking I'll be sitting, bring the game day bucket I'll be sitting on a toilet for like speaking six of hours on Monday. Uh, Food okay. commercials. Taco Bell. Taco Bell apparently got in trouble for that commercial because they were like, "Really? Oh, don't bring healthy food to a Super Bowl party." And then some like vegetarians of America like complained to Taco Bell and they had to take it down. Oh, they did, yeah, because the commercial talked about someone bringing the veggie tray and how everyone hates that person. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of true. Too, people are too damn sensitive. <laughs> they really are, though. Too but damn sensitive. This is America. We give them that freedom. This is America. 
Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's all I got. This has been the long Droid Life episode 13. Do you right. have any, any, any last words? Don't laugh at freedom, Ron. 49ers, 49ers by nine. 49ers by nine? Oh, okay. I'll, say, I'll just take a, a W is a W. I don't care if we win by one. Um, I'm at that point. I'm, like, desperate for the Super Bowl win right now, man. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do if we lose. I'm going to be really upset for a while. Yeah, because we're going to have to hear about Joe Flacco for the rest of our lives if he wins. <laughs> I guarantee it. ESPN, he's, he's the best quarterback in the world. You'll never hear the end of it. I'm I just want I just want San Francisco to be happy. I love everyone down there. I just want everyone to just be so happy and so they can riot and start fires. And if they lose, the whole city's gonna burn down. <laughs> and they can stab yeah. they can stab Ravens fans with knives yeah. after they win. Things like that. Dude, yeah, that's the that's, that's the Dodgers. That's that's in L.A. What are you talking about? No, in Atlanta, some Niners. <laughs> oh, like, in Atlanta. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like, like two weeks Falcons ago. kid. Yeah, I heard yeah. about it. I don't take responsibility Last for any. 49ers fans are class acts. Wow. Come on. You mother. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, that's it. Droid Life Show, episode 13. Everybody, thanks for tuning in to this long one. Replay will be up shortly if you want to listen to us all over again. We're on iTunes. There's a subscription to the podcast feed, all that good stuff. Troy-life.com slash show. Oh, check us out. We'll be back next week. we got a lot to talk about coming up. We're starting to get some stuff going here. MW, not MWC coming up, HCC event, all that good stuff. So. It's going to be a good one. Thanks again for tuning in. Enjoy Life Show. We are out of here. Peace. Peace out. Bye. Deuces. <laughs>